Welcome to Great Chefs of the World, a culinary survey featuring premier chefs from around the globe. The appetizer comes from the Salzburg area of Austria. Franz Goebel cooks a goose liver terrine with sauce made from the berry-like seeds of a rose. The entree comes from the island of Bermuda. Marcus Vesch offers a marinated rockfish served on Swiss chard with a passion fruit sauce. Finally, from Cannes in southern France, Francis Chaveau presents ice cream flavored with rosemary honey with a gratin of grapefruit and fig. Castle Munkstein overlooking Salzburg dates back to the 14th century. Now a five-star hotel, it features the cuisine of Franz Goebel. The veteran has worked in Norway, South Africa, Switzerland, the West Indies, and Malaysia. He returned to his native Austria in 1981. His appetizer is a goose liver terrine with rose hip sauce. Where is now the ginger liver? The chef removes the veins and silver skin from a goose liver. The liver is marinated in cold water for 12 hours and soaked in milk for 12 hours. And tin the hot up. That sits on so aus. The goose liver is larded with black truffles. The Madeira. Port wine. The goose liver is marinated in Madeira, port wine, and brandy. Salz und Pastetengewürz. Pickling salt and pate seasoning are added. The liver is marinated another 12 hours. So wird die Leber wieder für 12 Stunden mariniert. A terrine form is lined with plastic wrap. Gänseleber gibt man dann in eine the terrine form is lined with pork lard. And gibt die marinierte Gänseleber dann hinein. Die Marinade kann man ein bisschen hineingeben auch. Dann schließt man die Gänseleber mit dem grünen Speck ab. The terrine is sealed with lard and covered with bay leaves. It is then covered with plastic wrap. Ein paar Lorbeerblätter hoch.
and covered again with aluminum foil. Stick this with alufolie up. The covered terrine is poached in a water bath at low heat for about an hour. After poaching, the terrine rests for 24 hours in a refrigerator. Die Gänseleber wird dann nach uh, einem, einem Tag im Kühlschrank kaltgestellt und uh, geschnitten. A tomato rose joins gelatin as garnish. Green asparagus and chicory are added to the plate. Chef Gerbel blends a sauce that begins with pureed fruit of the rose or rose hips. Dijon mustard, cayenne pepper, ground pepper, salt, and port wine are added to the sauce. Cayenne pepper. Und ein wenig Salz. Das wird dann gemixt und vielleicht noch mal abgeschmeckt mit ein bisschen Portwein. Es soll etwas dickle, dickliche Konsistenz geben. Das ist die Hagebuttensauce. Und ein bisschen Petersilie noch drauf. Cumberland sauce is used to decorate. Tun wir äh, Nussöl. Walnut oil and lemon juice began a dressing for the asparagus. Ein paar Spritze Zitronensaft. Und einen Apfelessig rein. Apple cider vinegar, salt and freshly ground pepper are added. Dann ein bisschen Pfeffer von der Mühle. Und ein wenig Salz noch dazu. Für den Spargel als Marinade. Und für den Salat. Das wäre dann unsere Gänseleber mit Hagebuttensauce. Just 10 minutes from the city of Hamilton on Bermuda is Stonington Beach Hotel. Executive chef Marcus Vetch, a native of Germany, has been in Bermuda for over a dozen years. He enjoys island life and prides himself on Bermudian cuisine. He was named Master Chef of Bermuda in 1998 and indicates this with a marinated rockfish. The chef begins with the marinade. Okay, first thing we start. We're using some of our lemon juice. We're using one star anise, some glove, about three. Just squash them a little bit. Use two of our peppers, one lemongrass, about a cup of soya sauce, a 
for the cup of black rum. Add about like a teaspoon or two brown sugar. Slice of ginger. Basically reduce it until it has roughly a syrupy cons uh, consistency. Now the passion fruit sauce. Take the fresh and passion fruit pulp, about two cups, also about two cups of fish stock. Set them on the stove and reduce it. Okay. We can fry our sweet potato. Well, it's quite an easy way. If you have a mandolin, just use a sweet potato. This is a garnish. And put it over the mandolin. Best thing is you rinse it with water so all the starch comes off and it fries much nicer. But make sure you dry it up properly. The oil is heated to 350 degrees. Be careful when adding the sweet potato. It could splatter. And you deep fry it until it stops bubbling, until all the water is evaporated and they get nice and crisp. With the passion fruit sauce, we have to make sure we really whisk the sauce quite hard so we get like actually the, the yellow of the, the yellow pulp from the kernels away. It gives the sauce a very nice color. Okay, now our rum marinade is nicely reduced. Take a strainer, strain it through. Uh, we let cool out uh, the marinade for a minute or so. And we take our passion fruit sauce. The chef will retain some of the seeds which will be added to the sauce in presentation. Basically, slowly work them in. Two pieces of butter finish the sauce. You have to make sure the sauce doesn't get too hot, otherwise the butter splits. The rest is also on the side now. Okay. We take our rockfish, marinate it for about like five to ten minutes. So use a little bit more salt in our marinade. Okay. Okay. The fish is seared in olive oil. The rockfish will go into a 350 degree oven. Place it in the oven for, for about five minutes. Another element of the dish, wilted greens, starts with diced garlic and shallot. Take some Swiss chard. Basically 
basically wilt them in the pan. Swiss chard describes a number of greens that are in the beet family. The leaves are dealt with and taste like spinach. The stalks are often cooked like asparagus. Season it with salt, pepper, After its wilted, presentation begins. Just a little bit of my seeds. Whisk them in. Some of the passion fruit seeds go back into the sauce. Okay. Take our Swiss chard, place it in the middle. Take our sauce. Sweet potato straw. We'll garnish it with a couple of cilantro leaves. Francis Chaveau oversees the restaurant La Belle Otero, named for a notorious courtesan in the early 1900s. She once turned down $8,000 to spend the night with an explorer, who then promptly blew his brains out. She would have fit right in at today's film fest. Francis Chaveau's food does too. Here is gratin of grapefruit and figs. The chef begins with a base for an interesting rosemary ice cream, two egg yolks and a combination of milk, cream, and rosemary honey. La crème fleurette. Ainsi que le miel de romarin. This will go over heat. Meanwhile, the egg yolks are beaten. The rosemary honey dissolves into the milk and cream, and the mixture is brought just up to the boiling point. Voilà. On arrive à l'ébullition. Je verse donc le mélange de lait de crème fleurette et de miel de romarin sur mes jaunes d'œufs. The yolks are tempered by slowly pouring the hot liquid. The mixture goes back into the pan and back onto heat. Je vais le travailler sur le feu jusqu'à à la limite de l'ébullition de la pan. It's stirred Avec carefully and continuously, again avoiding boiling. Afin d'obtenir un léger répaissement. When the mixture is thick enough to coat the back of a spoon, it's taken off the heat. The base is strained, cooled, and then can be used in an ice cream maker. The almond cream that will go into the gratin starts with softened butter and powdered sugar. The mixture is thoroughly combined before the next element, almond powder, is added. Then one egg is added. This would obviously be easier to do in an electric mixer. The chef will beat this mixture until it's smooth.
Now the chef deals with the grapefruit and figs. The chef first removes the rind from the grapefruit, making sure that none of the bitter white pith is left. Then he removes the grapefruit segments, being careful not to include any of the membrane. en prenant soin de ne pas les, les casser. The segments are drained. It's very important in this recipe that the grapefruit be as dry as possible because during cooking, too much juice could adversely affect the almond cream. En quatre quartiers. Now some beautiful fresh figs are quartered. Whipped cream is folded into the almond mixture to finish. A crème d'amande. Et je vais lui incorporer délicatement la crème fouettée. It's folded in delicately and slowly. Petite quantité tout d'abord pour la détendre. He says just add a small amount of whipped cream to start with. The almond cream is spread on a serving plate and the dried grapefruit segments placed around the perimeter. Then the fig quarters are arranged in the middle. Quartier. The dish goes under a salamander or broiler until the almond cream is slightly brown. The last garnish is a scoop of the rosemary ice cream. To quote the chef, so after it's been browned in the salamander, the interesting thing about this dish is all the different flavors of Provence, almonds, figs which we're going to highlight with the rosemary ice cream. Donc,